This week in Boomtown, Central Ohio's growth is getting a cosmic upgrade. Ohio has always been this aerospace state, uh, going back to the Wright brothers. The first ever U.S. space park is landing right here at The Ohio State University, fueling new innovation and jobs in aerospace. Plus, could Columbus be the next big thing in AI? Some experts say we've got the right mix of talent, tech, and Midwestern grit to lead the way. And as Columbus grows, public art is supposed to grow with it. But this week, a major funding freeze could put that vision on hold. Central Ohio is booming. We all see it and we can all feel it. From traffic to development and growth all around us, leaders in this region will have to figure out how to embrace nearly one million more people. So here's what we uncovered this week in Boomtown. The White House calling out Intel. President Donald Trump is urging CEO Lip Bhutan to resign following reports and allegations that he has ties to China. This week, the president posted to his social media platform saying, quote, the CEO of Intel is highly conflicted and must resign immediately. There is no other solution to this problem. The president went on to write, thank you for your attention to this problem. Now we have reaction to what the president is saying in just a moment. Thanks for joining us for This Week in Boomtown. I'm Angela Ann. Well, let's start with some of the week's big headlines. This week, a major milestone for Northwest Bank shares. The regional bank rang the Nasdaq opening bell after 30 years of growth as a publicly traded company. The company just cracked the top 100 U.S. banks and wrapped up its biggest acquisition yet. Now, this week, we learned it is branching out to central Ohio. Plans are now in the works to build three new financial centers in the Columbus area starting next year. Well, Central Ohio's big transit makeover is moving forward as well. This week, state leaders and local business owners met up at a summit in downtown Columbus, and they focused on how major rapid bus lines, new sidewalks, and even bikeways will change the way we all get around. This is all part of the Lincoln's initiative, and voters passed that sales tax increase of 0.5% last fall to help fund all things transportation in the city. Columbus Mayor Andrew Ginther says we are one step closer to the first rapid transit route actually breaking ground. We collectively have made a commitment to the voters of Franklin County. Now we have to deliver, and we have to share and engage with the people of this community how their lives are getting better because of this work. Well, as the area around the Ohio State University grows, some students now have a brand new place to call home. Take a look at this. It's called the Rambler, located just a half mile from Ohio Stadium. Hundreds of housing units from studios to six bedroom apartments, which can house up to 889 students. And you can tell it's pretty luxurious with private study fitness center, even a pet spa, plus an on-site coffee shop. We know that place will be busy. Well, many of those students will soon become part of Ohio's workforce once they graduate, and efforts to build that are full steam ahead. The Ohio Chamber of Commerce this week hosted a summit to talk about the specialized workforce arena and the state programs that will help employers not only find new workers, but upskill the ones they have. Lieutenant Governor Jim Trestle spoke to the group as he is right now touring the state to help put together what will no, be known as Ohio's Workforce Playbook. Amazon Web Services is making itself known in Ohio. This week it announced more details to its expanded data centers in New Albany. The construction is part of AWS's $3.5 billion planned investment for the city. This will also include a 50,000 square foot Think Big Space focused on STEM learning. It really focuses on a gap that we have about women engaged in the tech industry and tech jobs and, and inspiring them in a way so they can see themselves in this career field and take opportunities that they maybe never thought were available to them. I think we had 800 students go through Girls Tech Day so far. 800 young Ohio girls that now have at least an opportunity to see themselves in a different place going forward. 
Now, at the end of the last year, Amazon's local and statewide economic impact reaching nearly $20 billion. The impact to Ohio's economic health has done pretty well as well. Not to mention, building these data centers have now created nearly 6,500 full-time jobs a year. Three and a half years since the announcement of Intel coming to Central Ohio, the chip manufacturer has weathered many ups and downs, from construction delays to a change at the top. And this week, the President of the United States made a demand that Intel CEO step down. Many analysts are now debating whether a sitting president should be making calls like that on corporate leadership. Here's 10 TV's Kevin Landers, who has reported extensively on Intel since the beginning. With the president calling for Intel's CEO to step down because of reported ties with the Chinese government, some may wonder about the future of this Intel site. I asked Lieutenant Governor Jim Trussell if he's one of them. To answer your question, yes, I'm confident that uh, we're going to be making chips in central Ohio. While Lieutenant Governor Jim Trussell is confident that semiconductor chips will someday roll off the assembly line at Intel's yet-to-be-completed FAB project, he supports President Trump's concerns about Intel CEO Lip Boon Tan's connections with the Chinese government, but stops short of calling for him to step down. If someone's uh, a part of the uh, CCP and, and it's a problem in my mind, um, and so, but I think you have to be fair until facts come out. Trump isn't the only one raising red flags about the CEO's ties to the Chinese military. Ohio Senator Bernie Moreno also called out the CEO on X, formerly known as Twitter. Trussell says he understands the frustration that the project isn't moving as fast as many would like. I don't know any other thing to do other than be confident that we're going to get this thing figured out. Mike Demler follows the semiconductor industry. He says the China question is not as concerning to him as the person leading the company. You need to set the direction of Intel as a technology leader, and he just doesn't have the background to do that. The China ties was a concern. You'd have the same concern for NVIDIA, for AMD, for Broadcom. I could just go down the list. You have Asian American CEOs of the leading semiconductor companies in the United States. So that, that, that can't be the issue. The lieutenant governor says for now he trusts Intel will make good on its promise to deliver on its $28 billion investment. I know nothing that tells me that their intentions aren't good, but, you know, we'll see as facts come out. President Trump's comments for Intel's CEO to step down have already impacted the company. Shares are down 3%. Reporting near Johnstown, Kevin Landers, 10TV News. Ohio has always been this aerospace state, uh, going back to the Wright brothers, and today we continue that tradition. Businesses are leaving the coast, they're going to places all over. You, you hear about Texas and, and you hear about Colorado and you hear about Tennessee, but they're, they're coming to Ohio in greater and greater numbers. Well, you heard it here, Ohio a long-known leader in aerospace and defense industries. And this week, the Voyager Institute for Space Technology and Advancement announced plans to build a first-of-its-kind space park at The Ohio State University. Now, this is expected to bring in many new jobs and opportunities. The news is fitting. After all, Ohioans were the first to put planes in the sky. And now Central Ohio is setting its sights even Higher. 10 TV's Meredith Garfalo sat down for an exclusive interview with the man behind the plan. There's something new taking flight in Ohio. Ohio has always been this aerospace state, uh, going back to the Wright brothers. And today, we continue that tradition. Just this year, big aerospace names like Anderil Industries and Airbus have announced new partnerships right here in central Ohio. Businesses are leaving the coast. They're going to places all over. You hear about Texas and, and you hear about Colorado and you hear about Tennessee, but they're, they're coming to Ohio in greater and greater numbers. Now, Ohio is adding Voyager Technologies to the roster, a company at the forefront of space exploration. We're building our own commercial space station to replace the International Space Station. So it's, it's really a wonderful time, both on the uh, national level and now on the state level as well. And Central Ohio will take part in that mission. 
This is the bedrock of American manufacturing. The blueprints are in to create the first ever science park in the United States right at Ohio State. And Voyager has selected local developer Alfred Construction to spearhead the project. The Voyager Institute for Space Technology and Advancement will have leasable offices, meeting areas, and laboratories, allowing for more space companies to move in and do business right here in Columbus. The reputation of Ohio, the quality of the engineering students coming out of Ohio State University, the companies that are coming here, uh, that's something that we'll be very pleased to be part of. Through the partnership, this cutting-edge innovation center will help drive the space industry as an epicenter of research in space and manufacturing and a boost to jobs and the economy in the Buckeye State. Because Ohio is a state that builds things. so. Um, Airspace industry is well suited to be here and we've got population and workforce to match, but we're going to have to invest and, and make sure our young kids in school know that this career is here for them and uh, they can build toward it. Thank you so much, Meredith. Now, Ohio State tells us the university is excited about this next step and looks forward to what it will offer students, staff and researchers for years to come. Well, it's not just aerospace. This week, we're getting a closer look at how defense technology company Andrewell Industries is helping fuel Central Ohio's growth. Now, it's expected to be the biggest job creator in state history, bringing around 4,000 new jobs over the next decade. Andrewell is building Arsenal One in Pickaway County, where it will produce military drones and autonomous air vehicles. During the annual Columbus Opportunity Summit, hosted by Columbus Business First last month, one of Andrew's leaders spoke about plans to work with community partners and area schools to help recruit future employees. The density of workforce that's available to us within about an hour's drive of the Arsenal campus south of Rickenbacker uh, was a selling point. And that's Zach Mears, and he says Andrew is also speeding up the traditional process of building defense technology at a much lower cost. In July, Jobs Ohio awarded Andrew with $310 million in grant dollars for a 30-year economic development agreement. Now, with Andrew creating thousands of jobs, people are going to need a place to live, obviously. And this week, we learned a massive new development is now in the works in Groveport, right down the road from the company's new high-tech defense campus. That development will be just south of US 33 between Ebright and Rager Roads. The area, just under 300 acres. That developer is proposing a mixed-use development with single-family homes, townhouses, and apartments. Well, this week, a new report from the Brookings Institution ranks Columbus as one of America's rising stars in the AI world. We are among just 28 cities labeled star hubs with strong ecosystems for AI jobs, research and innovation. And get this, Columbus is one of only three mid-sized metros in the country to make the cut proving we are punching well above our weight. Well, a big part of Central Ohio's growth right now is tied to artificial intelligence. And we know it is rapidly changing how so many people and businesses, how do they do their work? So this week, a panel of AI experts shared their thoughts on topics from what Ohio needs to do and become a bigger AI hub. They talked about how AI will change the job market and how schools will need to adapt to teaching students on using AI ethically. They also say Columbus doesn't need to copy other cities, but rather lean into what makes Central Ohio so unique. We are built on our Midwest value system. And I think leaders who lead with character and values and work with this AI will win long term. Now that report identifying Columbus as an emerging AI hub looked at factors including our workforce talent, our infrastructure and AI regulations. Well, look at this. Fashion is booming in central Ohio and the runways are getting hot as more designers and people in the fashion world start to realize Columbus is the place to be when it comes to building a new fashion brand. From Passport to Fashion to Fashion Week Columbus, these annual runway shows are what really cemented Columbus as one of the top markets in the country 
for fashion. And this week, top industry groups announced a new Direct to Columbus fashion and retail conference coming in 2026. We're ranked third in the nation uh, as it relates to fashion. And a lot of people don't know that. They think traditionally New York, Chicago, LA, but Columbus is a very thriving community, not only for fashion, fashion retail, but also the, the retail ecosystem that we have around Columbus. So we do draw from all over the nation, people coming here for jobs, uh, infrastructure companies coming to set up shop. It's all pretty exciting. Bottom line, this summit next year will better position Columbus as a hub for the future of retail and fashion technology. And finally, this week, we leave you with this. As Columbus continues to grow, so does the vision for public arts. This week, a year-long study is wrapping up that could guide where new murals, sculptures, and installations will soon pop up across Columbus. Now, this comes with the goal of making art a driving force in our economy. However, this week, that vision is facing a challenge after millions in funding for the Greater Columbus Arts Council was suddenly put on hold. Tendivy's Doug Petcash has that story. With every spray and swoosh of paint, a mural begins to take shape on a once plain fence in Victorian Village. I am focused, and, but this is part of it. It's part of the, the sauce. Seriously focused and somewhat frenetic, artist Giovanni Santiago. Let me sit, stand back for a second. I have to see what I'm doing. Okay, cool. Brings his vision to life. When finished, the mural will have a portrait of a woman between two colorful peacocks with Victorian elements in honor of its Victorian village location. The mural's message? Oh, peace, um, pride in their culture, pride in the Victorian village, pride in the Victorian village culture. This project is funded by the Greater Columbus Arts Council's Mural Assistance for Artists program. Public art, murals, sculptures, whatever they are, bring so much um, in, in bringing people together, fostering a dialogue, um, and making people proud of where they live. The mural program will go on, but the GCAC had to cut two other programs for artists, as well as marketing and one staff member because of unexpected budget cuts. Goldstein says Franklin County had to pause $4 million in anticipated funding for the council amid the trickle-down of federal cuts. It is heartbreaking. One, because this, this impacts potentially up to 450 artists who would have received funding from us. Um, the life of a staff person who was very dear to, who is very dear to us. The GCAC had already given 1,300 grant awards to artists, totaling more than $2.1 million this year before the funding pause. Goldstein says the next five months are filled with uncertainty, but also hope. We're part of the community and we're gonna stick together and we're gonna make it through um, what, what is probably gonna be a, a little bit of a rough road. Artists are creative and Santiago says they will find ways to keep doing what they do. It's a shame, but I, I think message to artists is we're not gonna stop. We have to keep going, it's our culture. Thank you, Doug, for bringing this issue to light for us. And we do want to hear from you. If you have any questions related to Central Ohio's rapid growth, or maybe it's something you want us to look into, just text us your questions at 614-460-3345. And if you happen to be watching us on YouTube, make sure to subscribe and then always drop your questions in that comment section as well. We'll do our best to respond. And don't forget our 10 TV Plus original, Welcome to Boomtown. It is streaming as well, where we share stories and seek solutions for everyone in Central Ohio. Thanks so much for watching This Week in Boomtown. I'm Angela Ann. We'll see you next week.